Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a good summer. You may recall about three months ago, we took a look at the Frozen Sonic Mini 8K, and we were really happy with the overall print quality, uh, the incredible print resolution, and just generally how solid it was. Today we're gonna be looking at its slimmed down brother, maybe? It's hard to describe what exactly this machine is in relation to what the 8K was. So about a year after releasing this guy, they're now bringing out this one. This is the Frozen Sonic Mini 8K S, which is now available for pre-order, and it appears to all intent and purposes to be a slimmed down version of this guy. So the big question that everyone really wants to know is, what is the difference? Um, is it a worse printer because it's cheaper? Uh, what have they taken out to drop that price? Upon first opening the box, it was pretty obvious that this machine had lost a bit of weight. Uh, this machine is actually three kilograms lighter to be exact, um, and that's due to a number of reasons. Frozen has switched out some of the metal components for more plastic ones, uh, which does make sense, um, given that it's a minimum $100 price difference at this point. So physically, what are the differences? Well, let's start with one of the most important components of any 3D printer, and that would be, of course, the LCD panel. The Mini S is using the exact same screen as the Mini 8K, which means that it has that same 22 micron uh, pixel size, and your prints are going to be incredibly, incredibly detailed. We did a couple of sample test prints using Frozen's PixUp website, which if you haven't checked out is very interesting, uh, especially if you're interested in printing sculptures, minis, um, or game general type stuff. Uh, it seems to be a very curated website. It's not so much an open platform kind of like Thingiverse or Printables. Uh, the link to that will be down below. One of the most obvious differences between these two is the Z-axis. The original Mini has two linear rails, whereas the 8KS has a single rail. However, the aluminum housing that the rail actually attaches to on the 8KS is a different shape, and it's actually a little bit bigger and just as rigid. Um, in my opinion, this is a good move because this printer, the build plate is so small by comparison to many of the others that are using dual rails, this is definitely overkill. So in terms of a way that they were able to cut costs, this is a pretty good place to start. On the Frozen Mega or our Piopoli, for example, dual rails make a ton of sense because the plate is like 10 times larger and it needs to be able to resist those torsion forces, um, the, f the forces of every release and every ascension back into the resin, trying to deal with all of that liquid. There's lots of reasons to have dual rails, but this machine is just using it unnecessarily. It's, it's overkill. Something else I want to note that I don't have verifiable evidence of yet, uh, I believe the linear rails on the original 8K are a little bit smaller than on the 8KS. This linear rail is a little bit bigger. Uh, on the 8KS, the, the skirt here is pretty much solid. It's, it's like an enclosed, solidly enclosed unit. Whereas on the original Mini, it has vents on the sides and a cooling fan on the back. This one seems to just have the cooling from two grates on the bottom. Um, I've noticed that this one is very, very quiet, like almost silent, because it probably doesn't have the same kind of cooling fan system. This guy is still incredibly quiet, but you, know, you, do, you do hear it from time to time. Now, is it a bad thing? It's really hard to tell in the, a lot of time that I have to work with these machines because the, the only way the cooling is really going to be an issue is incredibly long prints. Over time, when that UV LED isn't cooled properly, that can start to fail. But I won't see that for like another thousand plus hours. Another slight annoyance with the uh, 8KS versus the original is that the USB slot has changed position to the side of the machine rather than on the front. Um, not a deal breaker by any means, but uh, a little bit annoying. I do understand why they did it because it's easier to route uh, directly from the main board, which is located in this back corner, versus this one, which I think is running a, an extender from the back of the machine up to the front. And they're also shipping those really low quality USB sticks uh, as per usual. Um, I actually had quite a bit of problem with my USB. Uh, actually, not just one. I had a problem with three of them all at once. Basically, the machine had a lot of trouble reading them. My computer could, 
the machine just wouldn't see them. And I believe it was a formatting issue. Ultimately, I did find a USB that worked. And of course, your mileage will vary. Uh, I don't feel like this is a problem with the machine or a quality thing. Uh, it just happened to be a bad luck of the draw in our case. Simply put, uh, just use more reliable USB sticks. So one of the biggest things about this printer that surprised me uh, and ex was exciting as well was that this machine is no longer locked to Chidubox, which is really exciting because Chidubox is crap. Now, if you do like Chidubox, unlike me, you can still be using it, um, but it has now become an open platform. They're now using .prz, a uh, .frozen file, uh, specifically for this machine. And you can export those files from Chidubox, Lychee, uh, Voxel Dance Tango, or I think others will become available in the future as well as it is an open platform. So you're no longer locked to .ctbs, uh, which of course was an issue where if you did not export that file directly from Chidubox, you could no longer on the touchscreen change those settings in real time as needed. You'd have to go back to the slicer and change them which is incredibly annoying. So I'm glad we were over that stage of, uh, in, the, in the printing evolution and we can move forward as, a, as an industry. Just a few last little things um, that didn't really fit anywhere else. Uh, the Z-axis on the 8KS is one centimeter shorter than on the original 8K. Again, not a huge deal breaker, especially if you're like us and you're printing jewelry it doesn't make too much of a difference. Uh, but if you're printing tall, uh, like tall figurines, maybe it is. That's just something good to know. Uh, another thing, the build plates seem to be virtually identical, except for the 8KS has some ridges on the side, which seem to be more of like a tactile thing and less about grip or anything really useful. It's just a way of distinguishing that it's slightly different, but they are interchangeable. They do swap. They're exactly the same height. Everything seems to be the same except for those. And the same goes for the resin vats. They are also interchangeable as well. So if you had, uh, if this machine broke and you got one of these as a replacement, you could use those components on this guy and have uh, two vats and two plates and really get your production rolling that way. So when we were looking at our first prints with this unit, we skipped over some of the initial print tests as the screen is literally the same as the original 8K. And we wanted to really verify that it was in fact, basically the same thing. Uh, Frozen sent over a couple bottles of their Aqua Gray. Thank you, Frozen. Uh, this is a very nice resin. It's tough. Uh, they say it's designed for 8K. Kind of a weird misnomer there. Um, pretty much any resin will work on these machines. You don't have to have 8K resin for an 8K printer. Sorry, I just had to get that out of, out of, off my chest. The prints that we got off it were excellent. Very, very high quality. The, it definitely shows off that 22 micron XY pixel size incredibly well. Really nice for sculpture. Um, the one thing that I did have a problem with when it came to the, uh, actually both machines, is that that laser engraving on the build plate is too good, which is not really, a, it's not a bad problem to have. Uh, if you're new to the 3D printing space, then that's one less thing that you really have to worry about having your prints just fall off the build plate. Uh, trying to get these things off the build plate was really the problem here. And I broke several of them uh, because they were printed directly on the plate. This is of course only a problem if you're printing directly on the plate. If you're printing as per normal and you have that uh, base layer with the five millimeter height extra distance and you're using supports as you would most of the time, this won't be a problem. And it's, a, it's a, again, a really good problem to have. If you do want to print directly on the base plate with something like Aqua, I would recommend, uh, depending on your print settings, of course, lowering that base exposure time. The included resin profile for Aqua had a 35 second exposure time for those base layers. I dropped that down to 20 seconds just to be able to get it off the plate. So in some cases, you will have to modify your, your settings a little bit, but again, this is a good problem to have. We were using a base layer of 20 seconds down from the 35 second recommended base layer exposure and two seconds per layer after that. Both of these printers have excellent, amazing print quality that cannot be understated. Uh, and it, it's definitely almost industry leading. Now I say that because there's a lot of new printers that have just been announced recently that are gonna push that but that's for a separate video entirely. The print quality that comes off of either of these machines 
uh, pushes that of even the highest end machines that we've tried on this channel. So what's my overall opinion of the 8KS and why do you think Frozen made it at all? Um, I think that this machine exists to test the waters, so to speak. Simply with regard to the open file format and using a different type of control board. Breaking away from Chidubox is not really something that can be understated because for the last five plus years, Chidubox has almost been a monopoly on machines of this price point. I think the engineer who designed the Mini 8K probably realized that their design was absolutely overkill. And when they were given the opportunity to redesign it uh, into a lower cost machine, they were able to simply say, you know, this is in fact overkill for something of this size. And they were able to cut back on those areas very specifically and do it just right. I do believe that the 8KS is a worthwhile printer. However, if you're already in the printing space, you have a Sonic Mini 8K, um, this printer probably isn't aimed at you. It's not necessarily an upgrade. It's for your little cousin or your retired uncle who thinks that what you're doing with this machine is amazing and they want to start printing their own stuff um, and they just need a platform for RC parts or miniatures or prototypes or whatever. This is a truly great machine to start on. You're not going wrong in either case, but being that this one is a little bit cheaper, it's now probably the one you'll go to first. Just like what I said on the 8K review, the original 8K, uh, this is a very solid platform to learn on. It has, it's a solid platform for jewelers, which is of course what our channel tends to focus on. Uh, you're not losing anything with that 22 micron XY pixel resolution. You're probably not gonna be missing that centimeter of, of build height because you're printing rings or something, only about an inch tall. So it's not that big a deal. So if you're looking to enter the 3D printing space and you're looking for an inexpensive hobby unit that exceeds expectations, this is going to be a very great choice. The only thing that's wrong against it, in my opinion, is some of the creature comforts, um, like, you know, say Wi-Fi. Uh, the build plate might be a little bit small, but it entirely depends on what you're doing. And, um, you know, little things that aren't necessary, that you would expect to pay more for in a, in a much more high-end machine. Thank you very much for watching. If you've gotten this far in the video, also a huge thank you to our Discord community for making this video uh, like this possible. So if you want to join that Discord and learn more about printing and casting jewelry in general, make sure to check out that membership tab or click the join button below this video. Thank you to Frozen for sending along this printer. Uh, you'll probably be seeing it in future project videos and you won't want to miss those, so make sure you get subscribed. I will see you guys in the next video. Now, which one do you keep?